we're going to demonstrate the approach to the first metatarsal cuneiform joint, and this can be done both for lapidus procedures or for the treatment of first metatarsal cuneiform arthritis. We're going to make our incision at the midline of the metatarsal and cuneiform. Staying in this zone, we will avoid injury to any of the cutaneous nerves. We'll come down full thickness above the level of the abductor muscle, down to the level of the joint, but we don't come all the way down to the level of the bone so that we avoid damage to the anterior tibial tendon. So as we begin our approach, we're going to identify the abductor muscle and then also look for the anterior tibial tendon as it comes down to insert on the plantar and medial aspects of the first cuneiform. Once we're down to the level of the bone, we'll identify the joint itself um, by placing the blade into the joint, we'll come up over the dorsal aspect of the cuneiform to begin our exposure of the joint and then come down on the level of the metatarsal. We can then come down distally and inferiorly on both the cuneiform and the first metatarsal. This gives us access to the joint and we are just distal to the course of the anterior tibial tendon. We can then clean up any synovial tissue or any other osteophytes that may be present at the level of the joint. We can then use a sagittal saw to prepare the joint and make this cut just below the level of the subchondral bone. And we want to make this cut perpendicular to the long axis of the metatarsal. Once that cut is made, we can use an osteotome to remove this small sliver of bone. And this will give us a nice cancella surface to achieve our fusion. When doing a lapidus procedure, once this has been performed, you can predetermine the angle of the cut that you want to make through the first cuneiform, and that way you can get correction of your intermetatarsal angle by making essentially a closing wedge osteotomy with the base laterally. Once you've made that cut, you can again remove that sliver of bone, and then you can reduce the metatarsal to the cuneiform and temporarily fix it with a K-wire. And at this point, you could take a radiograph to assess your reduction and make sure the appropriate amount of bone has been removed. Fixing it with the K-wire allows you then to use your template. And again, the laser line goes at the level of the first metatarsal cuneiform joint. Place the guide wire for the CP reamer. And with the laser mark at the level of the joint, this guarantees that the recessed pocket for the plate will be in the appropriate position. Once that's been placed, we use the reamer to create the recess for the pocket of the CP plate. Once the reaming is completed, that guide wire can be removed. The reamings can be pushed in the joint to be used as bone graft. And then the plate can be placed over the medial aspect of the first metatarsal and cuneiform and will be secured into the medial cuneiform with an olive wire. Once that's secured, we're going to attach the plate to the metatarsal and again utilize the variable access guide to get the maximum amount of purchase on the metatarsal bone. Drill our distal hole first, check the appropriate depth with the depth gauge, and then place the screw. Once the screw is tightened, we'll then move to the more proximal hole in the metatarsal. Generally, this screw will be about a millimeter or two longer than the distal screw as the metatarsal flares as it moves proximally. Again, check the depth gauge and then place the appropriate screw. Once the screw is placed, we'll use our CP drill guide and we want to place this screw from distal dorsal aiming plantar proximal and we're aiming towards the proximal lateral inferior corner of the medial cuneiform. Use our depth gauge to check the, ga the depth of the screw. And then we'll utilize our CP screw, which is a partially threaded screw. 
and we'll introduce that screw until the head engages the plate. And at that point, we will then stop and we're going to remove the guide pins that we've placed for our temporary fixation so that as we compress the plate, those guide pins don't interfere with our compression. We'll then tighten that down to the level of the plate, make sure our olive wire is out as well. And then we can continue tightening that CP screw to get compression as this will pull the first metatarsal into the cuneiform and maximize the compression across the joint. At that point, you can feel how stable the joint is. We will then use our variable axis guide to place our screw holes in the medial cuneiform. If you're doing multiple joint fusion and you're doing an inner cuneiform fusion, you can make this screw hole uh, deeper to go from the medial to the middle cuneiform and you can gain fixation in that inner cuneiform joint as well. Once the second screw is placed, you can check your alignment radiographically and you should have a nice secure fixation of your fusion.